Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Welcome to Dig on America, where we speak truth to power. Every week, we give you the dig on how American history, policies, and media created the social and political issues we face today. DOA is independent media supported by listeners, but they'll tell you we're just fake news, deep state propaganda, funded by George Soros, the Clinton Foundation, BLM Marxists, and... Citizens United. Shannon Sharp. Everyone knows that Shannon Sharp is part of the deep state. <laughs> All that LeBron James love. What do you, what say you, Big Haas? Uh, uh that's great. Uh-huh. That's good commentary, Haas. It's great. And then and then he said, What? Oh, what? you can't you can't say that on air, Big Haas. That's against the rules. Hi, We're everybody. Get a for that. Yeah. We're lo- demonetized. Um, (laughs) Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second segment, the premiere segment of Dig on America. I'm Mikey Pham, and joined with Tim Bristol. Hello, Tim. That's right. I'm not Dutch. (laughs) Are you? uh, Yeah. Dutch is uh, currently unavailable, um, but he will be back next week, um, Mm -hmm. probably with, I don't know, some Soros bucks. Maybe that's what he's probably cashing his Soros check. We sent out a search party. Yeah. He, him's taking care of some things, so <laughs> he's in our thoughts and prayers. He knows what that means to me. Um, Tim, are you are you smoking or drinking anything? What are you doing over there? Uh, I have a Guinness pint glass full of water. <laughs> ah, a strong drink. <laughs> I'm actually about um, to have. I, I I I did have a little bit of beer before, but it's too late. So I have water. I hear that. I've, I'm still on my drinking less and less and less thing. I'm sleeping better. Yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> now I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not working retail anymore, so I'm not like constantly sauced so I yeah. can deal with toothless Trump-loving <laughs> racists for, for a paycheck. Don't say things like that about Dutch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even here to defend himself. <laughs> well, if um, I did but, say that to Dutch and he smacked me about it, I wouldn't expect the big media hoopla. I would just take my <laughs> slap for being an asshole because that's what happens when you're an asshole. Almost speaking of drinking, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the food truck was at a brewery uh, last Friday and they would not stop giving me beer. Like, it's fun to them. It is. Like the security guy gave me beer. A random employee walked by and gave us a six pack. We got we got vodka drinks. Like I was like, listen, guys, I got to drive this thing home at some point. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Everyone kept coming. By, Are do you do you have beer? Are you good? I was like, yes, I have beer. There's please so stop. much beer on this truck right now. Can I have water, please? <laughs> Something less uh, inebriating. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, it's fun. It's fun to be buzzed and make grilled cheese, but it's not fun to be like. You can't drive a seven-ton truck drunk and not hit everything. You won't miss anything. That is true. Everything will be hit on the path from A to B. And joining us, Big Haas. Welcome to the second part, the dig, the listener-only part. Yeah, yeah. I think they get. I think they get both parts. Don't they? Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna front. I haven't listened to the show in years. <laughs> I haven't seen the show. I don't know. I don't know what happens. I never listen to the show. Do you, you listen know, I, back, Big Haas? Man, I don't really hear myself talk. That's what I'm I, saying. It's I weird for me to hear myself. myself. And I'm like, oh look, look, look at this idiot's point. <laughs> Sounds like a stupid man talking. Well, since uh, Dutch is not with us. We have found our uh, understudy white boy to give us the dig this week. So, Mr. Bristol, the concierge of cheese, if you could just take us back. Um, I don't know Dutch's whole bit about, you know, his history teacher, but I'll My try. eighth grade social studies teacher. <laughs> My eighth grade social studies teacher, Mr. Humble. Mr. Humble. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk today, children. 
about political action committees, or as they are known, PACs. In the United States, a political action committee, or PAC, is a 527 organization that pulls campaign contributions from members and donates those funds to campaigns for or against candidates, ballot initiatives, and legislations. So anybody can give money to a PAC? Anybody. And just, I... and, and just to define what a 527 organization is, it is a tax-exempt organization under the IRS code for groups that primarily influence selection, nomination, election, and appointment of candidates for federal, state, or local office. So just like the church, PACs are tax-exempt. So a PAC has no costs? The only costs associated with a political action committee are either administrative or regard campaigns. Do they tax that money? No. So if I, so all right, hey, big house, I got an idea, homie. <laughs> so we're going to start up a PAC for <laughs> Tim's political campaign. And if we raise, I don't know, a hundred thousand dollars and <laughs> then he his, can drop right out. And we can then, well, his campaign can use the two thousand dollars that we promised them. Yeah. And we take the other part and we go to Vegas and oh. we turn that ninety-eight <laughs> into nine hundred and eight. I would just I would just probably want to take my cut and invest it in No, nah, we gambling, son. We out there. We about to be. We about to be out there. We getting the Lamborghinis on the strip with the underglow. We're doing the whole. Th we're doing it big. <laughs> I, I, I I would say that um, you can do that with about half the money. The other half of the money has to go towards something. Well, yeah, damn! Now we got to raise twice as go much. The uh, the re-election fundraising Vegas trip. Yeah, there you go. The fundraising. As long as you make it a pack expense, you're yeah. fine. It's a meeting. It's a meeting. It's a at conference. the Caesar Hotel in Vegas. It was the That's best. Like, it was it was the it was the central location for us to have the meeting. You know what? All, why don't, all the why don't you just make the PAC's address like the Caesar Hotel or something? Then you've got to worry about it. That's your headquarters. You know, Tim. That's why we're going to get you in the office. Those That's good right. fucking <laughs> ideas you got, like that one. So, uh, the history of political action committees. Boy, this is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> that makes it sound like it won't be fun. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to doctor it up with dad jokes like Dutch does. <laughs> uh, I didn't have that kind of time. But uh, the, political, the political action committee emerged from the labor movement of 1943. The first PAC was the CIO PAC, formed in July 1943 under CIO President Philip Murray. Uh, it was established after the United States Congress prohibited unions from directly giving contributions to political candidates. So they made PACs instead. So they made PACs instead. Uh, this restriction was initially proposed in 1907 on corporations through the Tillman Act. Um, and then the smith Connolly Act extended this coverage to labor unions in 1943. So there you go. Uh, corporations could not give directly to candidates under the Tillman Act. And then they extended that in 1943. And so unions were like, fuck it. We'll make these things right. called political action committees that have no legal structure yet, so we can do whatever we want. Um, a series of campaign reform enacted uh, during the 1970s facilitated the growth of PACs after these laws allowed corporations, trade associations, and unions to form PACs. Uh, there, there are four different kinds of PACs. Two-pack. Yep, two-pack. <laughs> Uh, An old two-pack shaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, as of as of last year, there were four thousand six hundred active political action committees registered with the Federal Election Commission. Four thousand. Four four thousand six hundred. Yep. How many people are in Congress? Less than that. <laughs> like <laughs> like one percent of that. Five hundred and thirty-five members of Congress. 
Well, voting members of Congress. So almost everybody had... Okay. Oh, yeah. Remember we talked about Jim Jordan before? Mm -hmm. He's got like five. Oh, see that? You see? See? See how yeah. they do? Yeah. Um, so oh, starts with one. The first kind of pack is called a connected pack, which is also known as a corporate pack. Uh, they are established by businesses, nonprofits, labor unions, trade groups, and health organizations. They're basically the political wing of a corporation. They will, right. A corporation will file basically for nonprofit status for the 527 status for a PAC, and they can put all the money they want into this PAC to, towards whatever thing they want to do. Um, these PACs receive and raise money from a restricted class, generally consisting of managers and shareholders of that business or union or whatever. So um, like the company goes in for X amount of dollars for whoever? Yeah. Yeah. And the people, the employees of the company and the shareholders of the company are the only ones allowed to give to the PAC. Sounds um, as fine. of January 2009, there were, I mean, this is like 11 year old information, but there were about 1600 corporate PACs. Uh, let's see. After that, there were, I mean, they've, they've ebbed and flowed the corporate PACs. Sometimes they're popular, sometimes they're not. Uh, the next kind of PAC is known as a non connected PAC. And this is a group with an ideological mission, single issue or members of Congress or other leaders who form these kind of PACs. So these are not corporate PACs. These are uh, issue advocacy for the most part. Um, there's another 1,500 of those flying around. Uh, they're the fastest growing category of PACs because they, don't, they can accept uh, unlimited funds from individuals. That doesn't they, sound safe. Yeah, not at all. Doesn't sound safe. <laughs> Uh, there's another kind of pack called a leadership pack. Uh, this pack is uh, put together by political parties. They are, and and we have these in Connecticut. Um, each of the major political parties have their own leadership pack, and they're to help fund their legislative races without actually funding them. Uh, basically, what it is is. The Democrats will put together a Democratic leadership pack, and all of the friends of the elected officials will donate to those packs, and then those packs will run ads on their behalf. Uh, it's also kind of like wishy-washy and and really dirty for the parties to do. What a break! And uh, just in time, uh, tons of mice uh, in the chat here says any cheese packs i guarantee you there's at least one <laughs> <laughs> dairy farmers there yeah there's gotta there's there's gotta be a dairy farmers pack i guarantee you there's one wow. um the last pack and the most famous version of these of these uh, organizations is known as the super pack super pack super pack uh it is an independent expenditure only political action committee which means uh, their sole purpose is to run ads or or send out mailers or whatever. Um, they're not allowed to directly coordinate with campaigns or candidates, but the money they raise, uh, they don't have to disclose who gave them the money at all, ever. The other versions of PACs, they have to disclose their donors. But Super PACs, uh, there's no legal limit to the donation size, and they don't have to disclose their donors. Um, and these are packs like Citizens United, um, Speech Now, and these. This pack is the result of the Citizens United ruling, and and a few other Supreme Court rulings. Um, Land Lakes has a pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. There is a super cheese pack. Wow. Wow. Um, there is a restriction on them coordinating with campaigns and candidates. However, it is legal for candidates and super PAC managers to discuss campaign strategy and tactics through the media. Through the media. 
Uh, that is a big fucking loophole. Why is that a loophole? What do you mean? It's, it seems <laughs> legit. If and and Ted Cruz has done this. He has put out um, Raphael did it. He put out clips onto YouTube that are just basically clips of him walking around in like campaign style video. <laughs> it's like B-roll. And he put out basically into the media what his agendas are and not so subtly saying, hey, there's you know footage of me on YouTube. Use it to make an ad. And so that's what happened. Um but unfortunately, like some of the comedians got a hold of it, like Stephen Colbert or John Stewart, and they're like, "Hey, the you know my audience, go make ads for Ted Cruz that are awful." And there's a ton of them out there. Uh, it's pretty fucking hilarious. But that's what they do. They will say non-directly to any pack, "These are my agenda items. These are this is what I want to happen to my opponent. Go do." That sounds fair. Um, and to date, uh, Pax have raised and spent about two or, or what was it? Seven, seven hundred million dollars, somewhere around that. That's it. Yeah. Just 700. What the, f <laughs> why is there just 700 million dollars floating around for people to run elections? That's so there's billions of dollars floating around for people to the last uh uh election 20 the 2020 election cost 14 billion dollars billion with a b how it just it flows in and that's and only a fraction of that is pack money right but the way that these campaigns raise and and, and spend money is Oof. But would... political action committees are sort of a wild, wild west of campaign spending. There's almost no regulation on them. That's that's bad, I'm guessing, by the inflection of your voice. And, 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 and here's the thing is that, guess what? Oh, yeah, money is speech. And... Oh, Citizens Unit. Yeah, that it, it stands to reason that those with money are screaming while those with little bits of money can only whisper. And they and people don't see the the inherent unfairness in that and how politicians will then become beholden to the yellers who aren't necessarily in need of their of their uh service rather than their constituency who can mostly barely whisper yeah and there's there's been a lot of uh there's been a lot of grassroots campaigns that are trying to root out uh the influence of organizations like PACs like when Bernie Sanders ran the first or the second time for president like his big thing was all of his contributions are, are small dollars. I forget what his gimmick was, but I think it was like $27 per person yeah. was the average. And he did not accept any PAC money. He still raised like $110 million or something like that. Like it was a crazy amount of money. And Hillary Clinton raised the same amount of money when she was running, but most of her contributions were from large donors or corporations. Um, from the, and the the what's it called leadership packs? Yeah, leadership packs. Um, but a lot of her money came from industries, just like most political contributions. They come from, I think, uh, according to speech net or what was it Open Secrets said that the three largest contrib contributors to campaigns are is the pharmaceutical industry, the defense oil. industry, and oil. Yeah. Um, that's where most of the money comes from and guarantee you every oil company, every pharmaceutical company. In fact, Pfizer does have a pack out there somewhere because they contributed to Jim Jordan. Um, oh, damn it. Pfizer <laughs> always on some bullshit Pfizer, but yeah, the, the two biggest, 
um, Supreme Court rulings that gave PACs their power were Citizens United and SpeechNow.org. The hell uh, is SpeechNow.org? SpeechNow.org was, uh, it was a very similar case to Citizens United. They were saying that uh, what they were doing was free speech. And what they were doing was they were making videos against, I think it was Hillary Clinton. Okay. what like Citizens United was doing. And Citizens United decision was about a documentary that Citizens United made about Hillary Clinton. And the argument against it was that they made a smear campaign, basically, with this documentary right. with PAC funds. And the argument against it was, well, that's, you can't do that. You know, I will say, is that the line? Is that the rule? Like, you can't make smear stuff with the PAC money? Um, so because of the IRS filings that they have to make, they're considered considered 501c4 organizations. Mm -hmm. And the regulation from the IRS is that they have to serve some sort of social good. Uh, a majority of what they do has to be to, towards some sort of social good. What Citizens United was doing was saying, well, we're a PAC, we're a political organization, and this is, to us, a social good, and we can do whatever we want with the money. Right. Um, the ruling was, basically, that, yeah, they could, it's their money, if they think it's a social good. Um, and same with the speechnow.org. That was, that was more specific towards uh, what they call electioneering which is making ads for for and against candidates. As long as they don't say vote for this candidate or don't vote for this candidate, they can say whatever they want. Um, I figured something like that would be more closely watched, but I don't oh, know. I, I guess not. Nah. So a little bit of history on the government organization that's supposed to oversee political action committees, the Federal Election Commission, uh, it is a six-member uh, committee panel that is supposed to be put together by Congress. Not by Congress people, but they're supposed to be uh, appointed by Congress. Um, they don't. Ha they lost all of their authority after the Supreme Court rulings to really police this. And because of how divided Congress is, right. the six-member committee hasn't had six members since... 2015 or something like that like they don't have their full membership because nobody cares so they they haven't been able to do anything since their power got taken away from them uh after there was a supreme court ruling that was mcconnell versus fec that M mitch mcconnell sued the fec saying that they had too much power and they were regulating elections too hard was Basically, that in the was that in the 1800s? <laughs> Could have been. He but, was there. Uh, he was saying that the FEC had too much power by giving them the ability to regulate how PACs spent their money. And the Supreme Court sided with him. Over The FEC is terrible at uh, uh, lawyering. They're terrible at getting decisions in their favor. They've lost every single one. Sucks. They just suck. There's uh, been at least five Supreme Court rulings that they've lost. Um, so <laughs> you can't win and you can't get out of the game. Exactly. Um, so for, I, I forgot the, I think it was the third one you said. Uh, what are the different kinds of packs? It was the, the connected, connected one. Connected pack, non-connected pack, leadership pack, and super pack. Super pack. So literally, Russian oligarchs can pay money into two out of the four? Yes. Maybe even three out of the four. Wouldn't you get money out of politics? <laughs> I, think the only one, I think the only one you can't get oligarchs into is the leadership packs. Right, because... They <laughs> that's literally the only one the one that's <laughs> and they probably found a way to get into that one they probably already so, in that one too from the other ones there are laws regarding foreign nationals uh contributing to campaigns but i don't know what the laws are for foreign nationals contributing to PACs. 
If only there was a machine. I know. If only there was a machine that would tell you. That I could type my questions into. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, any questions from you there, Big Hoss? Um, no. <laughs> I what took it out of them. Federal law prohibits contributions, donations, expenditures, including independent expenditures and disbursements solicited, directed, and received or made directly or indirectly by or from foreign nationals in connection in any federal, state, or local election. Okay. Doesn't say PACs. Yeah, it doesn't say PACs. <laughs> doesn't say PACs. It and, says and, a lot of very specific things, but it doesn't say PACs. And you know what? Even if it said PACs, um, they can't regulate like what corporate multinational corporations do. Like if it was a if it was one of the connected PACs and it was like, I don't know, ExxonMobil. Yeah. They're a multinational corporation. If they wanted to form a PAC, they could. Doesn't matter who contributed to it. They'd have to show who contributed to it, but who? How many people check those filings? The FEC cannot keep track of fifteen hundred packs all the time. With six people, I think oh, so. Three people probably, or four people, <laughs> something like that. Um, so there, there have been ways that states have found to regulate. Uh, how PACs operate, or at least diminish their influence. And one of them, and I, I, I talked about it on a, on a previous episode of, of the Dig on America, America podcast, uh, public financing of elections. Yes. Um, clean elections programs that prohibit corporations or PACs or lobbyists from contributing to campaigns uh, the only problem is, is that these programs have to be voluntary. They cannot be mandatory because of another uh, Supreme Court elect Supreme Court uh, decision decision that the FEC lost. Um, Damn FEC, y'all some y'all are Lakers <laughs> out there right now. It was it was Man, Leo v. Losing FEC. It. Losing and, everybody. Uh, they yeah they lose that they lost to Mitch McConnell. Damn um, bro. But uh, those sort of uh, programs help minimize the impact of PACs or, or in some cases reduce them to zero. In Connecticut, I believe that only 1% of campaign money is spent through PACs. And, and it's a similar case in Maine. But there's only a handful of states that have those programs. Uh, is, there, is there anything good about PACs? So. Can they be wielded for goodliness? They it the potential to wield them for good is it exists you don't sound very uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound very convinced <laughs> so the, the non connected the non connected <laughs> tax that uh you know can be a single issue or uh some sort of ideological goal or a policy goal those can be used for good uh especially if it's like individuals getting together and, and pooling money together for some sort of grassroots campaign. Uh, it's theoretically possible that PACs are used for good. And I'm saying that uh, because I very recently became the treasurer for a PAC. Oh, my God. Tim's been part of the oh PAC God, the God, whole dude. damn time. <laughs> the call's coming from inside the house, house. Right. <laughs> He's Fredo. <laughs> so, um the state of Connecticut has allows PACs, but in a very limited capacity, at least on the state level. So me and a few of my friends have gotten together and formed a political action committee. Uh, we're only allowed to solicit contributions from in individuals and the contributions can only be less than a thousand dollars. And the PAC is, we're going to help out democratic candidates who can't take the public financing because they're not, uh, popular enough to get the public financing. Uh, we just started it, and we're hoping that we can promote candidates that we like and, and we hope they can write better laws. Uh, we're specifically focusing on policies like ranked choice voting, uh, single-payer single payer healthcare, and 
What was the last one? Oh, I Next believe it time. was uh, automatic voter reg voter registration. I'm with all of those things. I will not shut down your little pack. <laughs> but I know that packs on a federal level are just ways to funnel money into campaigns through corporations or whatever. Um, they aren't, for the most part, they aren't good. Like 99% of packs are bad. My pack is good. All those other packs are bad. <laughs> <laughs> My pack is good. Ain't that the way, though? The motherfuckers down the way? I don't know. You know, but, I, I assume they're good people, but my pack definitely good. Our, well, our pack is straight garbage down the street, yo. <laughs> our pack has a lot of right here. Got uh, the red tops. <laughs> we have a lot of requirements for how we spend money and how we raise it, and we're very closely watched by the state of Connecticut. Of um, course. Uh, I think it's it's easier on the state level to watch packs if you just file with the state. But if it's a federal thing, it's we tried to be a, a federal pack. It's far too messy. Mm. Um, it would have been easy to get the nonprofit status and all that, but I don't like the connotation that comes with being like a super pack or one of these other packs that can just collect money from whoever and it doesn't matter because you can't you don't have to show who contributes we have to show who contributes and we can't take money from corporations or right. unions or any of that other stuff that's that sounds really fucking corrupt tim <laughs> it is really corrupt <laughs> the, the campaign finance system is corrupt af that sounds really really corrupt that sounds like gotham shit it it is if you look at how some of these the fucking falconies <laughs> fucking run in america um i'll give you an example turning point usa i mentioned them at the very beginning of the show three right. hours ago they are a, a hard right conservative political action committee and they are corrupt as fuck they used to be across the street from the insurance agent i used to work for Oh really? Yep, in Lamont. Huh? Old Lamont. Mm -hmm. Um, they're I believe they're a super PAC, so they don't have to show who contributes to them. It they don't have to show you know how much money they're getting from anyone. All they they can just get money and then spend it on whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And that's accepted because the campaign finance people say all this is disallowed. You can't do that. You can't do that. But then I guess you can use packs, so you can essentially just do whatever you want. Then, yeah, I mean that's why you just every... make a pack, and there's like a bajillion yeah. of them. So what's the chances of them finding us? And One in four thousand. That's why whenever campaign finance is brought up to anyone in Congress or the president, they're always like, "Yeah, I don't like them, but we need." What are you them. gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? There's because of Citizens United and all the other rulings, the only way to get rid of these sort of organizations is a constitutional amendment. That's or, what I was going to say. How do we get rid of these? a Supreme Court ruling that overrules the ones they already had. But that's not going to happen because the Supreme Court already said money equals speech. And corporations are people and they get First Amendment rights. I understand. I don't understand how buildings are people. Well, it's not it's buildings. It's the saying, you know, the money. Yeah. But as bank account, <laughs> as corporate entities, they have the right to free speech. So there's nothing that the the Supreme Court said that their hands are tied. And and actually, in my uh, my master's thesis, I quoted I I forget who the chief justice was, but he said like Garfield said, the money, cat. He said, "Money like water will always find a way." The flow. You can never stop it. Money is water. We should start Be a water, water pack. Be water, <laughs> my friend. That's I'm going to do a quick search of the top political action committees. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to guess. I'm going to go uh, uh, um, Halliburton. <laughs> the Halliburton pack. Nope. Burger. Ooh. 
this is going to be wow all right is is it stuff that we know like could we guess this you could guess it okay you mute it has oh he's talking now um uh wall green the Wahlbergs, the waldens the Walden. <laughs> waltons the waltons <laughs> let's see is walmart on this list Nope. Walmart got to have a pack. What? The Coke Brothers. I know the Coke Brothers got to be on there. Let's see. I'm looking at the top 10 right now. Well, give me the first letter of number one. I bet I'd get it. Look. Citizens United. <laughs> no, the Citizens United is up there. They're not number one, but they're up there. Monsanto. Uh, uh, BP. So the number uh, one. Berkshire one. Hathaway. Ooh, Berkshire. Okay, so Berkshire Hathaway is probably in the number one one, which is the National Realtors Association pack. Oh, yeah, uh, real estate. Oh, they all up in that. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. Let's peel the onion back a little bit further, Tim. <laughs> uh, and then you got the Council of Insurance Agents and Brokers. Oh, which, see, one is the, which one are the defense, the defense contractors in? That's three. That's got to be three. Let's see. Um, the okay. So the biggest industry that contribute that has packs is agriculture. Agriculture has the most amount of money in packs. So Monsanto, the cows mm -hmm. and the uh, and it, the pig goes, farmers and the chicken farmers and stuff like that. It no, goes no. Ag agriculture and then agriculture production is number two. That's, you're talking that's about corn. You talking about corn? Yeah, I think corn is one, and then the animals oh, is two. Uh, the ethanol lobby is one of the biggest lobbies in the entire country. Oh, making the E85. Mm hmm. Uh see, I'm gonna start. Yeah, yo, highs. I'm about to start plucking some of this corn that be growing out back of me. <laughs> All right. Start a pack. I, I put. We start a pack with that. All right. Tim already showed me the whole. He so just went through the whole. He just peeped me to the whole game. All we need is some corn and start a pack because wait, so wait, wait, wait. Now I need to take a step back. Who's giving the corn people money or they're giving their money? So it depends on the pack that they have. If they're a connected pack, then the corn industry, all the employees that and the board members are putting money into the pack. Okay. And if it's a non-connected pack, it could be like a group that's like Corn has rights or whatever. It doesn't matter what the <laughs> argument is. Uh, they can get money from anyone. Yo, why we laugh at corn has rights? We should never <laughs> laugh at something saying that it has rights. Yo, that that joke corn definitely has rights. I apologize, joke corn. Um, so the biggest <laughs> contributors uh, to candidates in 2019 and 2020 was the National Association of Realtors. The National Beer Wholesalers Association, oh. uh, the Credit Union National Association, so banks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. AT and T, hmm. and the American Crystal Sugar Pack, which sugar. is the sugar lobby. Yes. Oh, I'm saying. And then Comcast. So why are these like? telecommunication company so high up there Are they trying to get government know. contracts or something they trying to get at t phones on everybody's shit they're probably seeing who can get like the fiber optic <laughs> across the country the best or you know right. bios or some shit 5g that's crazy i wouldn't think for it to be such a commodity like internet is a um or a utility at this point yeah and I mean, uh, I don't uh, see the sewage plant up there, the sewage plant lobby dumping and, all their cash in there. You know, further on down is is Rathion Technologies, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Honeywell. Uh, but they're not, they don't crack the top 10. Wow. Hmm. So, like BlackRock <coughs> and uh, Northrop, uh, Grumman. Yeah, they don't, Those they don't crack the top 10. Let me see. By industry, where they would be. Go to strippers. <laughs> House of Cheeks. Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, defense. Uh, uh, the defense 
industry only puts about five five million dollars. I Bullshit. guess they don't have the lobby because they got a built-in lobby. Let's do it by total. Who's the highest? Okay. Now we're now I can see the glint in his eye. Got some juice here. So the the and this is sort of a weird one, but the the top uh, raising packs are single issue. Uh, it doesn't describe who they are or what they do, but thirty three million dollars went into single issue packs. So let's you know your gun rights advocates, uh, uh, corn has feelings, stuff like that. <laughs> Number two is the finance and insurance and real estate industry. What? Uh, number three is leadership packs. Those that's those are the third uh, uh, biggest political organizations is, is leadership packs. So like the uh... the the ones created by the parties to give the candidates. Wow. Uh, number four is the labor industry, so unions. Mm-hmm. And then number five is uh, the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry. Pharma. Big I pharma. should have known. I should have known. Uh, defense is number fifteen. I don't know. I feel like Hammer Industries definitely goes to the White House every <laughs> other day. And oil and gas is all the way down at like twenty something. Well, any any closing remarks there, Mr. Haas, as we roll into this humidor? We need to get the money out of politics. Yeah, we word. Do. Period. Point. <laughs> of money. No mas. We gotta, we gotta we gotta roll back and overturn Citizens United and get corporate money out of politics. Until corporate money is out of politics, the actual constituency, the actual citizenry of this country will continue to be uh, pandered to but never really catered to. There's a difference between pandering and catering. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. won't cater to your needs, but we will pander for your vote. And that's and gonna happen regardless of race. If you are an actual citizen, as long as Waltons can put 25,000 or $250,000 into a politician's pocket. Who do you think that per that politician is going to listen to if they get in the office? They're not going to listen to you and your tw fifteen dollar con contribution. No, you can keep that. <laughs> I didn't even write it down. They, 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 they don't even. They, that's just that's for their kids. <laughs> Thanks for the you know? burgers. <laughs> hey guys, we can go to McDonald's. <laughs> you know, like like that Eddie Murphy joke. When she, he was talking about Johnny Carson getting divorced and his wife wanted half. And like she had a job as a hairdresser and she was like, I made thirty dollars this week. So now we had three hundred million and thirty dollars. <laughs> and then they got divorced. And he, she got half that. That's what it is. It's the thirty dollars. Because. These corporations are just flush with cash. And they're just dumping it in, and they're dumping it in on both sides. So it doesn't really, you know, that goes back to the two, the, you know, two wings one bird thing because they, they 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 donate money to both sides and they donate enough money where they have influence on both sides don't can't you write that off your taxes no you can't you can't no political contributions you can't write off i was about to say i don't found the biggest no. loophole of all they, loopholes <laughs> no one's doing it out of the goodness of their heart <laughs> But I, I will say what Ha said, don't fucking trust any of the parties talking about they're not accepting PAC contributions because they fucking are. Yeah, I got a list here of the top PAC con contributors or the top people who take money from PACs. Recipients. Recipients. Pelosi's way up there. And it's full of Democrats and Republicans. It's, yep. They don't fucking yep. care. They take money. That's they're what they all want. getting that money. They all getting that loot. Vote for Shahid. <laughs> Shahid. And, oh, and, and, and then the way it's set up is that it's hard as hell for people who don't take PAC money to even get elected. Right. Yeah. Because they just don't have the ammunition. Or, or we have to, instead of it just being like small fundraising or anything like that, it turns into 
now a thousand people have to raise four million dollars to compete with them right and that's not fair because yeah. both people should be running at whatever they can raise from that community not all this yeah and i'll leave you with this one tidbit the most expensive congressional campaign from the last election was aocs no shit. yeah yeah they spent between her and her opponent they spent about 30 million dollars craziness craziness what and they both had packs behind them see that ain't right like aoc is fine but that's crazy gotta go along to get along i guess <laughs> yo i got this whole movement yo i'm gonna start this cult and go to mars let me know if y'all are down <laughs> it's called the green cult club or the green uh the cult of the green cup i don't have a green cup in here I'm about, get, I'm, about get, I'm about to get I'm about to get kicked out. <laughs>